More than 126,000 Idahoans have been tested for COVID-19 since March. Of those, about 8%, a little more than 8% of nearly or nearly 11,000 have tested positive. The World Health Organization recommends that number be at least 10% or less. And that led to this text from Anna Lee, who sent this in from Boise. I know a couple who have been sick for about a week. Both of them were tested for the coronavirus, but only one person's test was positive. My question is, are false negatives common? And what about the false positives? Well, for that answer, we asked Dr. Kenny Bramwell, who's a physician at St. Luke's. He said false negatives or positives can mean different things. But the bigger issue, he said, is there really is no way to tell right now exactly how common they are. We don't have at this point a definitive test or a gold standard test for COVID. So most of the time when the term false positive is used, it means that you get a test today that's positive and then the really good test that gets done in a few days, which is a different test, is negative. And they say, you know what? That positive result you got first was wrong. That's, that's, that's probably the most common use of the, the term false positive. Um, and the trouble in COVID is we don't have that second really good really handy definitive test. All we have is, well, two tests. Um, the one test that is probably most commonly gotten right now that we're running at St. Luke's is the RNA test where they swab your nose or the back of your throat or really deep in the back of your nose and they, and they test to see if there is RNA present that is consistent with COVID. That's, that's the most commonly done test. The other test that's done in other locations is they draw a blood test and they see if there's evidence of a certain type of antibody against COVID. But both of these are new enough that we don't know how sensitive and specific and, and accurate they are because we don't have a gold standard okay. test. So that's, that's one of our challenges right now is we don't have a comparison test that we can run in the background and, and check the antibodies or check the RNA against. So I asked Dr. what is that standard by which testing would fall into a category of a gold standard? He said, ideally it would be between one and 10% inaccuracies. It depends on the disease involved, how much we're willing to tolerate and what testing we have available. He says, admittedly, these COVID tests are imperfect because, well, we're still pretty early on in the development of this disease. And according to MIT, PCR tests, like what Dr. Bramwell just described with putting the swab up the nose, will like way up the nose. They say those are pretty accurate, but they have to be done perfectly and at the right time of infection, which is why false negatives happen more frequently than false positive. So a negative result doesn't necessarily mean you're in the clear. All of this keeps coming back to the same thing, though. Short answer always seems to be maybe or we don't know yet. That's kind of where we're all going with this thing. This is also new and the doctors and scientists are working to figure it all out as we go along.